the deadliest man alive. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. If you looked through pages of a comic book in the 1970s, you probably came across an ad for The Deadliest Man Alive. The ad said he was the supreme grandmaster of the Black Dragon Fighting Society, and he sold a book for a mere $5. You could learn Dim Mock, a.k.a. The Death Touch. This is the strange tale of martial arts and con master Count Dante. John Timothy Keehan was born in Beverly, Chicago in 1939 to a very well-off Irish-American family. From a young age, John had the world at his fingertips, but I doubt most people would be able to guess where his life would go from there. (laughs) He started boxing at a young age, continuing through high school, before he joined the Marine Reserves and then the Army, where he got his first taste of martial arts, and John was hooked. He got his black belt in karate and then became a sensei himself before he became the Midwest director of the USKA, or the United States Karate Association. John had bigger and better dreams, though, so he left the association to help create the World Karate Federation. But he didn't like that either, so he founded another organization (laughs) called the World Karate Federation. Not to be confused with the last two. It's like a thing at Taco Bell. You're just sorting words around, and then what what is it? It's all a burrito. Yeah. So once he was done creating and leaving and creating organizations, John set his sights on reinventing martial arts. Exactly what martial arts is all about. It's not a time-tested tradition perfected by many, many people across generations. Just start anew. Yeah. And things evolve. Irish guy. (laughs) Things, you know, evolve. Mm -hmm. Look at the UFC and mixed martial arts. Like, things evolve and Mm -hmm. people find ways to make the something old new or take a little of this and a little of that, put it together. Mm -hmm. But I think he was like, there's going to be no evolution. It's going to just start right now. (laughs) He had enough of all the ceremonies and traditions that are integral to most martial arts, yeah. which I get a little bit. Sometimes just like I want to kick. Fight, fight. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> fight. I don't need all the fanfare. And if you look at something like mixed martial arts, which does have a lot of that, but it, it, a lot of the tradition is kind of taken out. Yeah. I mean, or the- it's based on, you know. An individual, the choice of the school or the, the martial art itself. Well, it's it's like you're saying you can distill down, again, this art form, this cultural phenomenon that has been thousands of years old at this point and be like, I just want to cut all of that out and like just punching, just kicking. But it's not just <laughs> punching and just kicking. Oh, no. He wanted to focus more on making martial arts more straightforward. Which I kind of get. There's like a lot of mystique that makes it cool and interesting. Mm-hmm. But there's some of it's like, hey, I don't want all the tradition. I just want like the meat and potatoes of it. Jesus. This is like stripping this thing of everything. Also, again, I didn't mean to say that it was just kicking and punching. This man, though, was obviously like bastardizing this thing. He wanted something like minimum effort and maximum effect. Oh, like pressure point, someone dies? Well, I think Bruce Lee, who I've studied under Bruce Lee's students for years, oh, but once upon a time, okay. and Bruce Lee mixed a lot of different things, and he was very straightforward and like functional in that sense with Jeet Kune Do, and if you watched any of his mm. movies, and the mythology behind Bruce Lee, it's just like a very interesting time, also in the late 60s, early 1970s, hmm. it was a very interesting time in, in sports, and like in boxing, Muhammad Ali would have an exhibition fight. Maybe his last name is Inoue, but he, you know, a, a Japanese wrestler. Yeah. Sports were very cool and weird, especially when it came to fighting and martial arts and martial arts movies in especially the 1970s. Wow. It really kind of laid a lot of the groundwork for a lot of martial arts now through the 80s. Quentin Tarantino has martial arts in his movie. He's not looking at the mid-90s. He's probably looking at the 60s and 70s and a little bit of the 80s. Makes sense. The new type of martial arts that he was discovering, what was it called? You'll find out after this break. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary, void, or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. 
John's brand new style of martial arts was the dance of death. Oh, yeah. And the idea was, if you learned all the steps of John's dance of death, you would become the ultimate fighting master. <laughs> if it's ultimate, wouldn't that be master? Yeah, Could no. you be the ultimate amateur? Well, you want to be the ultimate top master. Or the middle middle management master? It's kind of implied. Mediocre, yeah. But I, you know what? Pop those adjectives in, please. With organizations and martial arts already reinvented and behind him... John had one last thing he needed to change before he would become the ultimate fighting master himself. He had to become himself. Oh, no. John legally changed his name to Count Juan Rafael Dante. Here we go. But this wasn't something he just made up. It was actually his real name. His family had just changed the names when they escaped to America from the Spanish Civil War. I mean, Irish John Keen. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't follow, but you know what? But you know where the information came from? Where? Count Dante himself. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Why would yeah. he lie? But Count Dante wasn't just a Spanish noble. He was a deadly martial artist who competed in death matches in Thailand and China, and he won by using his dance of death technique. Fighting doesn't have to always, always, always include death or killing someone. For him, it's to the death. It's like that extremist thing where it's like, can't you just have a nice spar, a wrestling match? You, someone's got to die. You got to you kill. You really just got to get them. You would not have made a lot of money in the martial arts world <laughs> no. saying, hey, wouldn't you like to have a nice, nice wrestling match? I still don't match? make a lot of money in the martial arts world. You make a little, though. A little. <laughs> Girl makes a living, okay? If you're familiar, if anyone listening is familiar with Frank Dukes, D-U-X. If you've seen the movie Bloodsport with Jean-Claude mm-hmm. Van Damme, it's based on Frank Dukes, who claimed that he fought in something called the Kumite, this underground martial art, and it was to mm-hmm. the death, and he won 500 matches. It has never been corroborated. Mm-hmm. It's only according to him. And he sort of made a living for a time doing that. And I think a lot of people were, you know, martial arts and the CIA were kind of, mm-hmm. the 70s were wild. Yeah, it was, They were really wild. But there was a lot of that talk of like the death touch, mm-hmm. Dim Mock, Bruce Lee's one inch punch. There's mm-hmm. so many pressure points. And you've, yeah. if you look through the old comic books or like karate magazines, you saw everything was, here's how to just murder somebody immediately and it's only 3.95 to get the, uh, to get the little book. The price is so low for what you receive. Just send us a money order, you know. I also was thinking too about the time is this the time where they were experimenting with LSD, like drugs in the military and This is ESD, around that time, yeah. Where it's like everything is possible. So the idea of like unlocking something with like one MK Ultra move like, uh, or like I love I mean I love that the possibility there's like a lot of mysticism mm-hmm. that goes along with the science mm-hmm. you know if you hit this pressure point it'll shut off blank but there's some mysticism behind it yeah all of it that's what makes it interesting and cool and if you've seen the advertisements from Count Dante they are the advertisements I remember seeing them because I would go back and look at you know you look go back and look at old comic books like people collect yeah. comics and you would see these ads and when you see it, you'll be like, oh, I've seen this before, depending on – unless you were somebody who had, like, friends and were cool and popular, mm. maybe you didn't look at them. But if well. you were somebody like me, you've seen them a lot. <laughs> I, I, I've i never seen this in, my, in the back of my old YM magazines. He would let everybody know about the Dance of Death by taking out advertisements in comic books where he called himself – The Deadliest Man Alive. And he sold his instructional booklet that promised to give the world's deadliest fighting secrets with a free membership to his new Black Dragon Fighting Society on the side. Comic book readers would find the advertisements that read, Yes, this is the (laughs) deadliest and most terrifying fighting art known to man. And without equal, it's maiming, mutilating, disfiguring, paralyzing, and crippling techniques are known by only a few people in the world. An expert at Dim Mok could easily kill many judo, karate, kung fu, aikido, and gung fu experts at one time with only one fingertip pressure using his murderous poison hand weapons. Instructing you step by step through each move in this manual is none other than Count Dante, the deadliest man who ever lived. <laughs> It's just a pamphlet, too. It's just a small... Essentially, like yes. It's just like, no, oh, it's just a secret in here in the back. Hey, 10-year-old, check this out. Whether Count Dante ever did take part in any death matches in Asia, we don't know. 
I would have to say probably not. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, we probably know. Man's from Beverly, Illinois. And it was like the mid-1970s we're talking Mm. about, so I'm sure you can get somebody to corroborate that. Mm. We do know he took part in the infamous Dojo Wars of the 1970s. Count Dante and a group of his students got together one evening to try to scare off some of the competition. They call this dojo storming, Mm. where you go to a karate school with your people and be like, my best people and your five best people. Go. And if we we lose, we're gone. If you lose, you're gone or whatever happens. Gone like they take over the studio? What what happens if you win or lose? I don't understand. Leases become null and void. (laughs) Electricity does not need to be paid. Oh, shit. It's the dojo wars. Okay, okay. And then they went to the Green Dragon Society's Black Cobra Hall to show them what's what. I mean, I just assume it's a bloodbath. People, like, it's like your five best guys are dead. They told the people at the hall that they were police officers (laughs) looking to get inside. So there's no Mm -hmm. honor. The honor you were Mm -hmm. talking about? Yeah. Like, if they were going in there... To be like, hey, you've kidnapped somebody, <laughs> our family member. But they just went in there to cause trouble. Mm-hmm. They, li- they didn't even say who they were, so there was no honor in it. Mm-hmm. They said they were police officers to get inside, so they were in plain clothes. Yeah, okay. And then they revealed who they were, and all hell broke loose. The dojo storm didn't last very long, but it did leave one person dead. Holy shit, for real? <laughs> Dante's friend and fellow sensei, Jim Knevick, everyone was taken to court to stand trial for Jim Knevick's death. But ultimately, everyone was released without charges. But it would only be five years before Count Dante joined his friend. Count Dante died on May 25th, 1975, when the deadliest man alive passed away at the age of only 36. Not in the middle of battle or another dojo storm, but in his sleep when an ulcer gave him internal bleeding. And Mm. that is the story of Count Dante, the deadliest man alive. I mean, the guy who died was the guy that's part of the deadliest team of assassins. That doesn't seem right to me. Rebecca, <laughs> for four ninety five. <laughs> okay, give me that pamphlet. Give me that pamphlet. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary, void, or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino this year. I was only playing for fun, so winning this was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's number one social casino experience. It's serious fun. With over 80 casino-style games to choose from, you too could win life-changing amounts of cash. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumbaCasino.com and give them a whirl. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of a winner.